Thanks for joining me for the web page track of Spark. I'm excited to show you this. It's one of my favorite projects to create in Spark. So I'm going to start by going up to create a project. And I'm going to go here to where it says web page. What I like so much about this is it's a really easy way to make a very professional looking newsletter or short explanation. We start with just the very top of our page where we put our title sequence, kind of like a slide or just an introduction to what our web page is going to be. Now before we do that, I want to show you the themes up in the upper right corner here. Now what's nice about Spark is it puts together all of the things that you need to make a professional looking site. It has a set text, it sets the colors, it makes it really easy to make something that looks nice. However, it does take away some of that choice in choosing your font, in the sizing, in the colors, but it also keeps you from making bad choices, which I really appreciate as someone with, uh, let's say, poor color choices. But there are a good number of options that we can have here as far as type of text and colors. I think I like this one. It's very clean. It's a sans serif font, which makes it easier for people to read. So I'm going to go ahead and add my title here. Let's pretend I am outlining an assignment for my students. So I'm going to call this research paper. And my subtitle will be making an argument. And what's next is I can add, using this plus sign, a picture background to this. So it's not just this gray background. I can either upload a photo or I can find free photos through Spark. And that's the option I'm going to choose this time. What if I just search for a research paper? There we go. I actually really like that. It's pretty clean. Not too busy. So let's talk about the kind of things that we can do with Spark. You'll see we have a lot of different options for what to add next to our web page now that we have kind of our starting piece. I am going to go ahead and start with, let's do a video. And maybe this would be like an introduction to the assignment, maybe it's a few words about what an argumentative essay is, but you'll notice you can't search here. You need to know what video you're going to embed here. So I'm just going to use a video from the library's YouTube channel, and it's just a short introduction video of our librarians. But what's really cool is you can just embed that video directly into this page. So I have my title, and as I scroll down, I have my video to serve as an introduction to my assignment. Let's see what else we can add. So we've added a video, and I'll click this plus sign here. Let's say I next want to add some text. I'll have my basic text editor here. I can add headers, which I would highly recommend. So the, the assignment. And if I press enter, you'll see I get a plus sign above where I just pressed enter. So if I want to add another section of text there, I can do that. If I want to add something between my header and my next bit of text, I can do that as well. So the research paper will be about making an argument with sources. Now here might be a good place for my learning outcomes, which I might want to have as a header two, two, 
learn about So I'm just kind of rushing through this part just to get some text on the screen so you can see what it looks like. I can also add in some other basic formatting pieces. If I set this up as a quote, it'll block it out for me. I can set up bullet points or numbering systems. I can make it bold. I can make it italic. I can make it a link. And there's another way to make a link besides editing text and using that text editor, and that is to put in a button. So we've used our video, we've used our text, let's go ahead and put in a button. So the button could say, click here to see the course for due dates. And I can choose where I would like this button aligned on the page. And fix my little spelling mistake here. I think it would look better centered. And there it is. I can add a photo. And I'm going to search for something completely irrelevant. Pancakes. Sure, those look delicious. Once I put that picture in, I have options on what I want it to do. I can have it be set in line with the rest of the text. I can ask it to be full screen. And once I ask it to be full screen, I can change the focal point. The point. So do I want to focus more on the plate. I think I want to focus on the top of those pancakes. And we'll hit save. I can add a caption here to explain more about why I put this photo in the middle of my assignment. Explanation. Why did I do this? I am sure that's true. So I've added a photo, we've added text, we've added a button, we've added a video. Let's look at some of our other options to keep this visually uh, exciting and look at the split layout. So the split layout allows for an image on one side of the page and then texts and buttons on the other. So let's go ahead and add an image. This time let's do waffles. Those are nice. Okay. And then on this side, we can either add another photo, we can add text, we can add buttons and videos. Let's just go ahead and add some text. Let's say over which breakfast is better are as old as the dinosaurs. I'm sure that's true, and from there I can add a button. To the Houston Museum of Natural Science. We'll center that up. I'm sure they have lots of information about breakfasts and dinosaurs. So that's how the split layout looks and how you can use it. Let's talk about the photo grid. So we can add multiple pictures. I am going to choose to search for breakfast. And let's choose several. That looks healthy. And then we can choose to edit the grid and how we want these photos to be laid out. And what order we want to see them in. Save. And then add a caption. Breakfast debates are delicious. 
And finally, the Glide Show. Now, the Glide Show is probably my favorite because it lets you glide through several images with captions, and it's very smooth. The transitions are really beautiful. So I'll go ahead and choose three images and hit Save. And then they all give me an option to add some kind of text. So it's very similar to the photo with the caption. But we actually have a few more options here. So I can add a secondary photo. I could add a video on how to make crepes to relate to my image. I'm just going to add crepes are good. And just like with the other image, I can edit the focal point so I can make sure we get a really good shot of those crepes. As I scroll through, you can see how it slowly transitions into my next photo as my next caption loads. So I'll go ahead and add some more text. Pics. And let's go ahead and edit that focal point to focus more on our frying pan. And finally, text. Coffee is the best. Case closed. And let's see, we need to change the focal point on here. I kind of like it centered. We'll save that. So those are all of the different options for the kind of layouts and texts and videos that you can add in a Spark page. Let's go ahead and go to the preview and see what that looks like. So this is how it will look when you send it out to your students. I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way to the top. So we have our research paper making an argument. And this also looks really good on mobile. It scales down really well. We have our starting video. We have our text with our headers, our header one and our header two, our link and our button. So this is a link using just text, and this is a button. We have our picture that we set as full screen and added a caption to. We have our split screen that uses the image, our text, and another button. We have our grid of images with a caption. And finally, we have the glide show where as we scroll down, the caption slides and then it transitions into the next image. And what's very nice is when you use images through Spark, it automatically sets your image credits here at the bottom. Now it does not automatically do your video credits because that is something that you're adding from outside of Spark. But all of the images that you search within Spark are already there. If we are just using this as a presentation, we can do that as well. It has a present mode that will set it to full screen that you can then just scroll through. But now that we're done, we probably want to share it with others. So I can go up to share and I can publish a link and share it. Now it also has print options and I will tell you that the print option looks not great. This is a medium that's meant to be viewed online. If you try to print it, it will come out as a PDF and it's honestly kind of a mess. I've tried it with a few different ones using a variety of the tools and it just it doesn't look great. But what's nice about the publish and share link is that later if you make edits to this those edits will update within the link. So I can give it a title. If I want to I can set a category but it's not necessary. I can set myself as the author where that's visible or I can block that off if I don't want to. Here is where I can add or edit the photo credits. So if I wanted to add a credit for the 
the video. North Paris librarians. Introduction. And from there, I can create the link. Now, this usually takes a few minutes for it to load and be ready to go. There it is. So I can copy the link. I can send it to people. I can embed it in a web page if I want to. I can automatically send it out as an email, and it'll open up my email tool, which I don't want to do. Uh, if I were using Google Classroom, I could automatically link to that. I could share it via Facebook and Twitter. But the easiest thing to do is just going to be to copy that link. Now, if I were to go and make changes, if I wanted to change this title, I could change it, and that link would reflect those changes as well. So keep in mind that if you make changes to this, and someone has the link, those changes will be seen right away. So just be sure that when you share it, if you need to make updates, you may need to let people know that they need to go back to that same link to view any changes or updates that you make. Well, this has been Spark Pages. I hope you really like this tool. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's visually interesting, and I think it's a really great way to present information in a way that makes it very clean and easy to see and understand, and also provide multiple ways of getting information from adding videos to adding images and adding your text and links out. I think it just looks really nice, and this is probably my favorite of the Spark tools. If you have questions, we'd love to hear those down in the comments. Please let us know what other tools you'd like to see. We'd love to get your feedback and know what kind of things you need help with getting used to and using. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, I've been Megan Hopwood from the Lone Star College North Harris Library. Have a wonderful day.